Hello everyone. If you were following the crippling depression video series, you're probably pretty surprised to see a part five because the entire time I always talked about how it would be a four part video series. So here we are in part five. Part five is going to be covering the damage and the aftermath from the actual competition. In filming the four part series, I realized I never really addressed or covered the damage or any of the wear that happened with any of the components, largely because I didn't really know what damage there was until I fully disassembled and kind of filmed everything. Now that I've had the time to disassemble things and I'm working on version two right now, I have a better idea of what all happened and what I need to change for the next version. So in this video, I want to show all of these parts that I have laid out in my table. These are all of the parts that sustained some kind of damage through competition, and then we just kind of give you an overview of what happened and what to kind of expect when battling your own combat robot. Over here, I'm going to start with the weapon system and all the damage that this lovely little weapon caused to itself. Here are the components from the weapon system that sustain some sort of damage. I'm going to start first by talking about the weapon disc. Uh, this is the disc of S7 that I made. It's seven and a quarter pounds, somewhere around there. And everything looks pretty fine with it. It's got some scratches and some scuffs on it. It does have a chunk of the tooth missing. And the main reason why this happened is because I fought uh, this robot called Pop-Tart twice. And Pop-Tart's chassis is made out of S7 tool steel, which is the same material as this. So when you have uh, two materials that go up against each other, this is what tends to happen. If this was going up against aluminum directly, you'd never see anything like this as S7 is much stronger and much harder. But when you go up against a chassis that's made out of this material, that's what tends to happen. Next up, let's look at the armor plates. The armor plate actually fared pretty well, except for this, which I think happened in the very first fight. This should continue like that, but this little um, corner got knocked out. And the reason this happened is because from the upside down view, the bottom view of the robot, this kind of goes in eh, something like that and um, just kind of loosely protects. It is only held in place here and here, so these two pieces can kind of flap up. And so what happened is the weapon was spinning around, this piece came up just a little bit and got caught by the weapon and just got sheared off. And I'm suspecting that this little um, dimpling right here also happened from the force of the weapon slamming into it. You can see that this is just kind of curved up a little bit right there. And if we look closely at the weapon blade, it would be sitting like this in the robot. We can see that right here, maybe you can see that in there, there's a little scuff or, scuff or scrape, which, you know, the only one that's gonna be on the inside. So this was sitting like that, came around, and boom, that scuff is like right there. So it just came around, came into contact with this and ripped off that chunk. For the next version of Crippling Depression, I am changing up how the bottom armor attaches to stop that from happening. First up, I want to apologize for the shiny nature of this part. It makes it really difficult to film. So um, yeah, let's look at the weapon block. There was um, one little issue that actually caused a lot of problems. So if you remember back, this is the weapon block. We have a motor here and a motor there. If you look really closely over on this side, you can see there's a lot of gunk and discoloration over here. That is from this motor, which ended up frying itself and just turning into a fiery, smoky mess. You can see a lot of brown discoloration there, and I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, but this motor basically exploded, and I kind of stemmed from one major issue, and that is the washers that I use to hold everything in place. These are the washers, and I'll show you where they go. But if you look at them, they are just severely cupped and deformed. So here's another look at them like that. These are supposed to be flat up against one another, and they are very much not. These things are very cupped. So how this all goes together. If you remember from the assembly, this goes on here. That goes on the underneath side. Then this tapered bearing goes like that. And then you have this screw that goes through the weapon and through this whole assembly. And then these washers go on here and then your nuts go on top of that. Well, I didn't really anticipate that there would be that much downward force 
pressing against this whole assembly. And what happened is because there is a slight gap from here to the actual middle of the hub, these washers ended up wanting to cup downwards. So they actually cupped down into that hub. And what that did is end up loosening this whole assembly. This assembly is meant to be very, very snug, um, hence the double tapo roller bearings. And so when all of these washers decided to cup inwards, everything loosened. Well, what that caused was a lot of issues. It caused rubbing along here because this was now not sitting perfectly flat. It had room to move around like that. So it actually rubbed against the sides here, and this is actually very, very rough. That rubbed against the inside face of this. That caused this whole plate to heat up quite drastically. After one fight, this was almost hot to the touch. So that created a lot of wear. If you look inside here, I actually put in a spacer. The only thing I had on me at the time was some aluminum tape. So I actually put some aluminum tape on here just as a spacer to space it a little bit far out from the base of this to help prevent some more of this rubbing. Um, but that created a bit of an issue. And then in addition to the rubbing there, it also created the issue with the weapon coming into contact with the armor, which most likely caused it to come back into contact with the armor over here. So basically, these little washers that ended up cupping in made this loosen, which caused all the wear issues against there and also caused the issues with rubbing against the armor. So. I am going to do something very different next time. I'm basically going to do a solid spacer instead of these three washers and um, integrate that with a nut. So basically make a solid piece that's something like that that won't have that cupping issue. And that is most likely what caused this motor to blow. So I'm going to do a little bit more of a close up and show you just exactly what happened to the motor internally. At the very end of the rumble, we noticed some smoke coming out of crippling depression, and it was this motor that had just died. Um, if we look closely inside here, you can see some charring around the wires there. Let me see if I can get another shot. You can see some around the yellow wire there, and then if you look on the top, it's not supposed to be all this brown color. Uh, for anyone wondering, all this white is epoxy that I added. You add epoxy into the motor to keep the winding stable. Um, it's called battle hardening. Um, you add the epoxy just to keep everything safe so that when it gets hit by something, it doesn't just crack apart. And so the epoxy is all looking good, and the windings look uh, generally good, except for when they're all blackened like inside there. So I'm not exactly exactly sure what happened. It could have been any number of things, but essentially this motor overheated, the windings um, touched and shorted, and then a little, you know, mini fire started. So I'm going to have to replace this motor. Um, there's nothing really different that I want to do for the next iteration. I think this is fine. I think just this motor overheated because I was driving it really hard. This was during the rumble and it was almost 10 minutes of these motor running, which is quite a bit. Moving right along, let's talk about the drive system. Very little actually happened with the drive system. The most notable thing that happened was the mount for one of the motors actually came off. It just kind of basically wiggled loose because I was tapping into this ABS plate and the threads just really aren't that strong when tapping into ABS. So it just kind of wiggled its way out over time. However, these um, drive cup were in place and actually held the motor where it should have been. So that was actually kind of nice. The drive uh, cover things here actually didn't fare so well. You can see that there's some cracking right there. So they kind of got a little bit shattered, but I'm not really all that surprised. They're there to absorb impact and basically just kind of keep things in place. And you can maybe see on the inside a little bit that little shiny spot at the end was where the motor was rubbing against the back of it, which is also perfectly fine. That is exactly what it's there for. And the other one on the other side, you know, is just a little bit more squishy. It is just kind of completely destroyed in certain places. But like I said, that's exactly what they are there for. In addition, the fans that go over top of the drive ESCs, um, they 
just basically disintegrated. This one's really funny. It just doesn't really do that much anymore. Um, these, I actually had several sets of them and replaced them several times throughout the fights. There was no good way to battle harden fans. So I'm basically just gonna keep this design the same and just keep replacing these fans every match. So not a big deal there. Lastly, let's talk about the aluminum chassis and the frame because that actually took the most amount of damage. In the previous video, I talked about the um, Linex coating and how I kind of felt it fared. I'm still not 100% sure. Um, as you can see on this front panel, it mostly can come off. If I really worked at this, I could probably get the majority of this off of there. However, if we look underneath of it, you can see that it did actually absorb quite a bit of impact, and there is a good reason for this peeling up. Like, what's interesting is right here, you probably can't really see a whole lot of anything, but underneath, you can actually see some damage. And same with here, there's really not much to show on the surface, but underneath, that is a pretty substantial gouge. So it kind of did something. I'm gonna do a little bit more investigating and see, but in a lot of places, there actually might be more damage underneath here than I realize. And on the side panel, um, you can see kind of similar things. It chipped off all throughout here, but these are some pretty substantial hits and pretty substantial gouges to the aluminum. So. The Linex fared okay, but it really wasn't exactly what I was hoping for in this, you know, end-all kind of um, coating. But man, there is just some really, really nice damage to the aluminum, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about my favorite part of damage on the entire robot. When I was doing the disassembly for this video, there was a reason why I only took off one of the drive pods, not both of them. And that reason was this screw right here. These are the screws that actually go through all four of these plates that go directly into the drive pods like that and then hold it into the inner frame like that. Well, there was this one screw that got hit directly. You can see it right there. It got hit and it kind of got mashed in and here is what the actual screw looks like. So this is the full screw. Let me see if I can roll it. Oh, it actually does kind of roll. Um, so this was going from this panel through, through the drive pod, and then connecting into there. Now it was still fully threaded into this place, and it was fully through the drive block, but if you just look at this thing, that is fantastic. It is really, really screwed up. And I actually had to fully drill this out. I actually broke a screw extractor in this trying to get it out even, and I just had to drill out um, the whole thing to get it off. So that was pretty interesting. And that was a pretty big side hit that came in from the side. So if we flip this over and look closely, that is the hit itself. And you may or may not be able to see this on camera, but there's actually a big dimple here. It actually pushed in from the backside and actually mushroomed it out on this side. So that is quite impressive. And I haven't really gone through the footage to see exactly what did this, but whatever did this, I'm pretty scared of that. That's pretty cool. Um, from here to there, this is anywhere from about three eighths to a half inch thick aluminum. So to be able to kind of bubble it up like that, that is pretty neat. Let me see if I can maybe pull this off a little bit. Yeah, so you can just see kind of this indent right there to where it just indented the metal in. So that's actually pretty neat. So I wanna go back to this drive block really quickly because um, actually some interesting things ended up happening with this. So this sits inside the robot like that, and these are the internal frame rails, which um, this one sits like that, and there's another one that sits on the other side over here. And so if this is the front of the robot, every time it rammed against something, I actually saw that this was starting to loosen. And if we look at the bolts that connect right there, there, and there, here's what they look like. They are 
kind of all over the place. These are really wonky and all bent up. And I showed this a little bit in the um, weapon overview, but these things are just, you know, going in all sorts of different directions. So what was happening is when this was attached into there, the impact was shoving this back and creating these screws to deform. And let me do a closer view to show you what these holes look like. So here is a close-up on this frame rail. You can see the um, counterboard side right there, and the counterboards are pretty ugly. And on the other side, it's really interesting. Um, so if you look really closely, you can actually see that these holes have threads on them. These are not threaded holes. The threaded holes, you can see, um, let me get my other hand in there. You can see that is quite a bit larger than the screw. And these threads that you're seeing in these holes are actually from the force of the threads pushing against it from the weapon hits. So it's interesting that the screw itself actually squished or formed threads into these panels. And I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different for the connection method next time to prevent this from happening. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the amount of damage that crippling depression sustained during AVC 2017. We'll see how it performs for Motorama in 2018. But overall, if I figure out the issues with the weapon disc mounting and can solve that, I think I might be pretty good. One of the main reasons I did this video was just to kind of give people an idea of what kind of damage can happen. I didn't really have that much damage, but if you just kind of look at some of these panels, I mean, these are 5 8 inch thick 6061 aluminum and they have pretty good gouges taken out of them and just the fact that the tooth is missing on the s7 blade that's pretty impressive and i just absolutely love i might frame this i just love this screw how it kind of you know goes like a little bit of an s curve just to see a bolt kind of go like that is really interesting and another side note is all the hardware I use is like black oxide, hardened, you know, this is all relatively expensive stuff. These are like a buck fifty a pop from McMaster. This is all, you know, better hardware than you would normally get at your hardware store. And I chose it specifically for these applications. So this is just a good example of what can happen during a match. And you know, even these washers. I forgot exactly what the load rating is on these washers, but it's really, really high. And if I took this in the vise and tried to bend it, you would not be able to. There's a lot of forces going on here. So this gives you a little bit better idea of the forces involved in combat robotics and one of the reasons it makes it so cool. So hopefully you got a little bit something out of this video as well as the rest of the Crippling Depression series. I will see you in the next video. As always, you can check out my Facebook page for updates about my channel and what's going on. And you can also check out my Patreon page for the channels that I support and also to support my channel. Thanks again for watching.